to make sure you take notice of those who uh, are dealing with, again, COVID-19. Uh, as we know, the count is going up uh, among those who have been infected. I think we hit right at 11 million uh, that have been infected. And uh, we want to continue to lift them up inside as well as those who have lost loved ones in this process. And so uh, we pause to honor, we pause to ask God's uh, deliverance and his blessings upon those uh, who are needing it. As we are battling yet again another, amen, rise in numbers. And even in this time, we need God to shine on us. And I want to take it back just a little bit to what the church used to do a long time ago when uh, it seemed like we just needed the presence of God. Uh, and I, I can just imagine uh, some of the Roman saints used to just cry and say, Lord, shine on me. Amen. So let's see. Let's see a little bit of shine. On me, shine on me, let the light from the lighthouse shine. Sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us 
for all of our unrighteousness. So we realize that, that when we think about it, our response, especially when it comes to the things that have been caused through sin, is just as important uh, as we go through adversity. But then we found ourselves last time, and we stopped here dealing with the response to adversity. Here it is, that is permitted by God. I want to take you again, as we begin to look at it, there, there are, I believe, ten steps according uh, to the writer of our textbook that gives us how we should respond to adversity. Here it is, that is coming from Satan. When Satan is given permission by God to afflict us, how do we respond? So here is, uh, perhaps, uh, as we look at it, our response, and oftentimes as believers, watch the text, uh, in Christ Jesus, God permits some adversity to come into our life. Let me say that again. Every now and then, God does stay the hand of the enemy. God does allow every now and then calamity to come into our lives. And here it is. The reason God does that, here it is, because God oftentimes has to get our attention. Every now and then, we are exposed to pride. Pride comes before a fall. Every now and then, God needs to show his love to us. And so he cares for us simply by saying, I ain't going to let you get so far out there that it's hard to get you in. So sometimes he has to allow things to get us back into the fold. Mm -hmm. But notice he also helps us uh, when he sends or permits adversity to come to reevaluate our priorities. Sometimes God is put on the back burner. And we allow everything else to be in front of God. And here it is. God said, I'll have no other God before me. Not your little G's, <laughs> not your cars, your houses, your jobs. And sometimes he allows certain adversity to come to let us know he's supposed to be first. Matthew 6, 33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and the rest shall be added. But if I come to realize that sometimes our priorities are messed up. And God has to allow some things to come to help us to examine ourselves, to make sure that he is not last on the list. So when we think about it, we should honor God by responding the right way when God allows situation or even Satan to bring, here it is, some adversity in our lives. And so let me share with you the 10 steps. And, and I, I promise this won't be too painful tonight. Uh, we, we, we stopped last time focusing on the fact that the very first step that we have to go when God permits uh, Satan or allows adversity to come in our lives, first step to you is to reaffirm, here it is, your relationship with God. Why is that important? Because we have to make sure, as we talked about last time, that you are in the right standing with God. Because here it is, when we're all in the right standing before God, that means that God knows that we're living right, doing the right thing, and every now and then we have to say, God, am I where I need to be? Am I positioned for your blessing? Am I where I need to be in my relationship with you? Am I praying like I need to? Uh, am I living the way I need to? So sometimes we have to reaffirm that here it is, that my relationship may need some work. And every now and then we have to stand before God and that Jesus Christ is first of all the Lord of our life. So the first thing we have to do, the first step, is we're dealing with the fact that God allows some things to come in our life, we've got to first reaffirm our relationship. But then secondly, the second step for us is this, to pray for removal of, here it is, that adversity. Uh, far too many people say, well, you know, uh, this is just God's will. But you got to understand that, that even Paul recognized when he had a thorn in his side uh, that, that, that here he prayed to God three times. The text says that he sought God thrice and asked God to remove this thorn from him. Can I tell you, it's nothing wrong with praying, even in the midst of your adversity. Why is that important? Because when we think about it, uh, sometimes our prayer life is not where it needs to be. And God oftentimes will uh, allow us to go through things to help us to understand that we need to pray. And we need to recognize our willingness to pray. Here it is, maybe the lesson the Lord is trying to tell us. Uh, you got to understand the Bible says pray without ceasing. That means just not praying when things are bad. But we pray when things are good. We pray when we get up in the morning. We pray when we go to bed. But here it is. When we go through our adversity, here it is, we've got to learn how to trust in him enough to say, God, I'm dealing with this adversity. God, I'm dealing with this trouble, and I need you to remove this circumstance. 
You got to realize that God does all our prayers. I know if you say some things, that's just God's will. But here it is. God also honors our prayers. And when we get to a point where we realize that that adversity is too much to bear, we got to be conscious enough to say to God, God, I need you to move this thing from my life. So the second way we deal with it uh, is to pray for removal. But then the third step that we go through, and here it is, is to yield to not my timetable, but to yield to God's timetable for removal. Now let's look a little deeper at this because I believe it's important to realize that, that not all adversity is, here it is, reversed instantaneously. God is not a microwavable God. That, that means that, that every now and then, uh, God doesn't move when we want him to move. God doesn't always move stuff when we get too much and it's too hot for me. No, we got to realize that, that, that God is not always looking from an instantaneous standpoint, but here it is. God will inevitably remove it. We don't know when. We don't know when it's going to happen, but here it is. God can move it. And sometimes what adversity does, it teaches us to be patient. <laughs> it, it, that, that's something I have a hard time dealing with, but I'm praying over it. I'm praying over it. Adversity, it, it teaches us to be patient. Here it is. And it allows God to be in his full work in our lives. We're ready for God to do this right now. But God says, you know what? Sometimes we got to yield to his timetable because we got to understand uh, that God's ways are not our ways. And, and, and because of that, it is far as heaven is and earth to God's ways and your ways. So we realize that God doesn't operate on the same timeline as you. Uh, you got to understand that one day in the eyes of God is like a thousand in hours. So when we realize this, we realize that sometimes God's timetable, Sonia, is not yours. But we realize that God's timetable needs to be moved. But then there's a fourth way. And we talk about another step. And here it is, the fourth step. If we know that we are trying to get to a point where we're asking God, here it is, to help us to deal with that adversity caused by sin, uh, here is the fourth step. We got to reaffirm God's promise of sustaining grace. Now, why is that important? Well, when we think about it, we have to learn, here it is, to trust in God and allow his strength. Remember, we talked about not long ago uh, when we were dealing out of, out, out of the Bible. The Bible said uh, when Paul went to him and said, God, remove this thought, God says, my grace is sufficient. What God was ultimately saying is not only did he have unmerited favor, but his grace symbolized his presence. So when we're going through the adversity that's caused by sin, we've got to then say, God, I know you promised never to leave me. You promised to be there for me. So when we think about it, watch what happens. Uh, we have to learn to trust in God and allow his strength and his presence to get us through this time of trouble. Anybody, you know, when you're dealing with COVID-19, have had to really learn how to deal and how to trust God? You know, we're going to work. We, we have to go to Kroger's and Walmart. And, and we have to trust God, son of you. Because here it is, sometimes we're weak. Sometimes the first time we see somebody without a mask, uh-oh, I'm, I'm, I'm about to lose it. I'm about to lose it. But when we learn to trust in God and allow his strength and presence to get us through this time of trouble, that is why we know that God has performed. Now, here it is, uh, 1 Peter 5 and 10. Notice what it says. And the God of all grace, I need you to see this, who call you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while, after you have been through those trials and tribulations, after you have been through those storms, he says, here it is, will himself, watch the text, restore you. When you've had an opportunity to go through that storm, when you've had a chance to go through that trial, here it is what he says, he will restore you. He will make you strong. He will make you firm. He will make you steadfast. That's the good news about the promise of God because here it is. God won't leave you weaker than he found you. Mm -hmm. Oh, they get that. I just found that a little while ago. In other words, whenever you get God on your side, God ultimately makes you stronger. Here it is because you are with him. And this is why he's saying to you and I that we've got to have his sustaining grace because the more presence we have of God, the stronger we become. The more we're able to deal with trial, the more we're able to be restored because here it is, he is with us. So when we start to look at it, we realize that how do we get through these things when it's find out that there's some adversity caused by sin? Here it is. We got to reaffirm God's promise 
of sustaining you. How many of you know God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you? No matter what you've been through, no matter how sinful your life has been, no matter how many things you've done wrong, you can still rest assured that God's sustaining grace will be with you. Anybody got it? Mm -hmm. So watch what happens here. We realize our fourth step is to refer to God's promise of sustaining grace. But fifth, we realize that there's a fifth step. I, I, I know we're getting somewhere tonight. There's a fifth step. Here it is. The fifth step is that we resist temptation to sin or deny God. I mean, it, it is so easy uh, when it seems like adversity has, has worked your last nut. The bills are not paid. When it seems like you're dealing with all kind of stuff, it is so easy to say, God, I'm through with you. God, I, ain't, I, 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 I pray it's still going on. I'm, I'm still dealing with this storm. Here it is. If we're going to get through and respond in order, we got to resist temptation to deny God who he is, or to sin. How do we do that? Well, we realize that Satan does attack. I want to take you to the book of James. James chapter 4, verse 7. Because you got to understand uh, that James had a lot to say about uh, this Satan. James had a lot to say about uh, this enemy of our, uh, this arch enemy of God. Look again what James says in James chapter 4. Look again at verse 7. Uh, let verse 7 with me. Uh, because I, I, I believe it's, it's more important for us to realize that, that we're dealing with an adversary who is trying his best to steal your joy, who is trying his best to keep you miserable, uh, to let you know things are not going to get better. But watch what James says in James 4 and 7. He says, watch the text. Submit yourself to God. <laughs> Resist the devil. And watch what he does. He will flee. In other words, here is the key for us. Satan will attack you. Please, please don't, don't, don't forget the fact that uh, Satan sees how well you grow. Satan sees something that you get ready to get baptized. He, he, he get ready to do some great works. And, and you got to understand that, that Satan that Satan is watching. He, he, he's on notice that if you don't get you now, he may not get you when you go out. So what he does is oftentimes sends every fiery dart. He can send you away everything he can do. But how do we do with that? We got to resist the enemy. How do we resist the enemy? By submitting to God. And the more we submit to God and say, God, I need your help. Uh, this thing is too big for me. God, I need your help. I'm going through. God, I'm about to lose my mind, pull out my hair. I'm about to give up. God said, submit to me. Because when you submit to me, the Bible says, then you have the power and strength to resist the enemy. And the more you resist him, he does flee. The more you give in to him, the more he's going to keep attacking and, and, and trying to get you to flee from God. But here is the key for us. James says we got to resist him. No matter how rough it gets, don't give up. Don't, re don't, don't fall into temptation. Don't let that sin so easily beset you. So what is he saying to us? If we're going to be able to deal with it, the fifth thing we got to do is resist any temptation. How do we do that? Well, the temptation to sin is something all of us are going to face. Can, can I tell you, it's a wrestling match between your flesh and your spirit. Uh, I heard on one occasion, Paul says, when I decide to do good, <laughs> evil is always present. What are you trying to say, Paul? Paul says, every day I'm wrestling with my flesh and my spirit. My flesh and my wondering eyes get in front of me. <laughs> Talk to me, D. But, but, but sometimes that, that, that the more I got to fight with his old flesh of mine, that spirit says, don't do it. <laughs> Just say no. And so it's a constant battle. And here it is. If all we're going to be able to do with it, here it is. We got to realize that it is still possible to be tempted. And because it's possible to be tempted, we've got to figure out and we got to face the fact that as Christians, no matter how long we've been following Christ, no matter how saved you are, no matter how many uh, outfits you got that say Christianity, you will be tempted. Amen. But watch what happens here. But James says, watch this, resist the enemy. And when you do so, he will flee from you. The more you give him attention, the more he hang around. Mm -hmm. Amen. Anybody, anybody ever seen just a, a wild animal and you start feeding that wild animal? And guess what happens? He's going to come back the same time yeah. and, and, and try his best to get more from you. This is what that devil does. The more you give in to it, the more he's going to keep coming back and he's going to stay. Uh, and, and, and here it is. He's going to want to drive next time. Yeah. You know, we try to get him out, but now he, all of a sudden he's in the house. He's in the, 
in the, in the, in the relationship. He's dealing with your children. Because here it is. We were not able to resist him. We were not able to tell him, get thee behind me. And because of that, here it is. You fell into sin. You allowed it to become a part. Adam and Eve fell in that same boat. Because here it is. They were not willing to submit to God. And says, no, you, I can't. I'm on God's team. And so oftentimes, our eyes get us in trouble. Sometimes our flesh gets us in trouble. And this is what he's saying to us. If we're going to truly be able uh, to get beyond adversity caused by sin, you can't keep giving in to it. you got to just say no. And so as we see here, the fifth thing we've got to realize is that he shares with us that we've got to make sure that we do the right thing. Now, here's the sixth one. Sixth one is beginning to explore ways, and this will be for us, in which we may grow through this experience. Let me say it again. If we want to be able to deal with that adversity caused by sin, we've got to start exploring. The better word explore means I've got to look for other ways. I've got to begin to look at it. And sometimes in, in looking for other ways, that means I've I got to perhaps, if I ain't coming to church, I need to come to church. If I don't read my Bible, maybe I need to read my Bible. If I don't have a good prayer life, I need to start getting a good prayer life. In other words, i got to find a way when I've been caught in sin to figure out how can I grow now that now I, I've had a chance to be uh, found out and now I need to be on God's team. Well, when we think about it, what can you do to become stronger? That becomes the part for us. Uh, when, when, we, when we find ourselves having to respond the right way, because you do have that power to respond the right way. You can, you can let yourself be beaten by what's going on or you can respond and say, you know what? After I come out of this, I'm going to be better. I've had an opportunity at my, my former church, that was a man who, who didn't come to church a lot. You know, I knew he was far. You see him on the CME Sundays, Christmas, Mother Day, and Easter. And, uh, you know, for, for some reason, he, he actually ended up uh, finding himself. He had a, a heart attack. And I, I, I remember going to the room, and I, I remember praying for him. And, and he cried the whole time I was there. And, and the amazing part about it, before I left our deep, uh, Pastor, as soon as I get well, I'm coming to church. Amen. And I started asking myself, why does it have to take adversity to get us to get up and do the right thing? Why does God has to allow certain things to come in our life? And I tell you, Sonia, he, he came to church. He, he was a man of his word. He stayed in church. I saw him on a regular basis. But I started asking myself, why did it take this to grow you up? To, to show you that 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 God ain't, ain't uh, God, God God is no one to play with. You got to realize when you fall in the hand of an angry God, God, God all the blessings you have, God can cut them off. Amen. You know, you, you got to realize that that you are not your own. You belong to God, and because of that, you you got to realize that after you come out of that adversity, uh, you you got to find a way to say, God, let me be better than I was before. Him. That is where we are right now. Learning how to explore ways in which we may grow through this experience. Well, how can we do that? Well, when we think about it, here is the key for us. We have to face up to the areas of weaknesses. Now, this is amazing because most of us, until we begin to see that we're not as strong as we're supposed to be, here it is. We've got to learn to face up to the areas of weakness in your life. Here is the key for us. When we realize that we're not where we need to be, that, that I'm weak in my prayer life, I'm weak in my devotional, I'm weak in the things I'm doing in my family, here is the key for us. We start to review, <laughs> and you might have to find a way to become stronger in these areas. Mm -hmm. Here it is. It starts today. You might say, well, I'm, I'm going to wait till next year. You know, I'm waiting for COVID get better. But can I tell you that there's something as we look at COVID-19, COVID-19 should have woke a lot of us up. And in other words, there are some of us, we haven't really been in our sanctuaries. We hadn't really been in ministry. And, and, and if you hadn't missed those things, here it is, something wrong. What am I trying to say? If you are truly committed to God and his church and, and his word, and, and, and it's been taken for you from seven, to eight, nine months, then and, and you ain't felt nothing, <laughs> then maybe that's an area that God says you got to get stronger in. And I believe that because I, I, I believe that in the midst of all that we're doing, uh, 1 Peter 5 and 10, look, look what Peter says here, that the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, why did he say, after you have suffered, we've been there before, after you have suffered for a little while, watch what he does, he restores you. We saw this last time, he makes you strong. 
He allows you to be firm and steadfast. And, and the minute we come out and we're growing in the, in the areas that we need to grow in, we should be better. That's why I, I tell you, Brother Chapman, uh, when, when, when folks start really coming back to church, uh, we ought to have a better church. I'm just going to be real. We ought to have better ministry. We ought to have be better choir members. We ought to be a better church. Because here it is, the bank didn't close the door. <laughs> but, but oftentimes when we start to look at it, we realize that God has spoken. And when God has spoken, he says, all of that stuff that, that we once did, guess what? It's time to become stronger now. This is as we start to look at it, we ask ourselves, well, how do we experience, what is our response uh, when we realize that that adversity is there? Well, we ought to be trying to become stronger. In every area, we don't like people, we ought to start liking people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you got some hate in your heart, that, that'll, that'll be some things that you, you say, God, work on my heart. If, if I can't deal with folk, then that'll be something you work on. Because here it is, when we respond the right way, we have the power to say to God, God, you've taken us through this. And here it is, 250,000 people did not make it where you are. 250,000 people from March to now are gone. And you have an opportunity now to get stronger. You have an opportunity to work on the things that, that here it is. That, that have called you to fall into the things that you shouldn't be on, God said it's time now to become strong in the areas that are weak. Everybody got it? But look again as we start to look at it. Notice what happens here as we start to look at it. What is our response? Well, the seventh step. <laughs> look at the seventh step. Is to deal with your adversaries in a godly way. I asked the question uh, at 12 o'clock, who is your enemy? Who is your adversary? Who, who are those people that oftentimes you can't deal with, you can't sing with, uh, I, I don't talk to them no more? Who are your adversaries? Mm -hmm. and, and, and this becomes important for us in the church because uh, as we start to get right with God, as we start to grow in God, should we have enemies? Who? Should, should we really have adversaries? People that we don't deal with? <laughs> because here is the key for us. If we are truly being able to respond to God in the right way, the seventh step is to deal with your adversities, here it is, in a godly way. Now, I want to take you somewhere because I think uh, Matthew chapter 5, can I take you there? Look, look, look what Jesus tells his disciples as, as it relates to enemies, uh, as it relates to dealing with those folks that, that sometimes you don't want to deal with. Matthew chapter 5, uh, let, let me share this with you, verse 44, verse 44. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. Look again, as Jesus began to share with us a little bit about how we should do the things we need to do. Uh, look at verse 44. He says, but I say unto you, <laughs> love your enemies. Let me rewind the tape. Uh, again, we forgot the seventh step when I'm dealing with my response to adversity that's sometimes caused by sin. He says, the first thing you got to do is love your enemies. But watch this here. He not only do you love your enemies, but he says, bless them. Ooh, they curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them that despitefully use you. <laughs> and persecute you. Here it is. Let's say it again. How do I deal with those people who are my adversaries, who are my enemies, those people I don't like, the people I don't want to sing with, the people that, that, that I don't deal with, I delete them from my Facebook page, I don't even call them anymore. Jesus says, watch this. Love your enemies. <laughs> Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Yo, it's a theme going here. Uh, uh, pray for them that despitefully use and persecute you. Here it is. Now could be a different way of dealing with your adversaries. Hmm. How many know that's hard to do? That's hard to do. That's hard to do. Uh, because yes. again, we, we still we still oftentimes operate in my flesh. And my flesh want to hate people. My, my flesh don't want to do good to folk that, 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 that have done all they can to tear me down. But here is what happens here. Sometimes God allows the adversity, here it is, to come in our lives, to begin to shape us, to teach us how to do things God's way. And so when we start to think about it, here's the key for us. Uh, in order for us to be able to handle things in a godly way, it means to give love. Uh, the first thing he says is you got to love your enemy. How do I love them? I've got to give them me. I've got to show them that I can bless you. I've got to show them that I'm going to do good to them. 
Amen? Love is an action word. Am I right, y'all? And, and because of that, love is an action word. We got to then watch to do good. <laughs> we got to pray. <laughs> we got to do all of these things because here it is. When we begin to do that, it means we give to them what they may not give to us. That is different because here it is. There's a lot of folk that 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 no matter what you do, they're gonna still be who they are. Exactly. Amen. You you can you can do all you can. Uh, uh, to love them and they still will give you that backside. Y'all gonna talk to me again. <laughs> so how do we deal with that? Well, here it is. We gotta learn to do a godly way. We gotta give that love. And the more we give that love, then hopefully somewhere along the line, God will deal with them. Because here it is, I'm not responsible to how they respond to me. Exactly. But I am responsible about how I respond to them. That is what happens sometimes when God allows his adversity to come in and it, and it finds us out. We, we got to realize God says, look, if you are really changed, how are you dealing with your enemy? Hmm. So here it is for us. Realize the seven way that we deal with it uh, is, is we got to treat our enemies different. But here's the eighth way. The eighth way that we deal with it is we begin to read passages of scripture in which people encounter adversity. Now, why is that important? The Bible says, study to show thyself approved. It, 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 and, and here it is. When, when Paul began to deal with Timothy, one of the things that he began to show them is that in order for you to really know God, to know how to deal with that adversity, he says everything you need is in the book. Y'all got it? Why is that important? Because when we read how God brought others through and learn how to have victory in the middle of your adversity, can, can I just take you back? To the fact that Job was someone that dealt with adversity. In all that Job went through, the Bible said he did not curse God. And then at the end of the book, the Bible said God gave him double what he lost. Now, how many of us have had some Job experiences where we thought we lost everything? We thought we ought to give up. But here it is. We use the examples of Job to get us through our storm. We've seen even David. David was a man after God's own heart. David was someone who wanted to build God's house. And God said, no, you won't build my house because you got too much blood on your head. But ultimately what God did was he established the throne of David from now until end. Watch what happens here. We, the more we read God's word, here it is, we learn how to have victory in the middle of our adversities. We learn that because here it is, we've read it for ourselves. So, we as Christians can be totally secure in the Lord, here it is, by studying the Bible. By letting that basic instruction before leaving earth be my guide. The more I do this, then I know what God's plan is for my life. I mean, can, can it possibly be that God sent some adversity? Because here it is, we ain't picked the Bible up in six, seven months. We, 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 we couldn't tell you any of the books. We don't know from Genesis to Revelation. We don't even know 66 of those books. As a matter of fact, some of us don't know two or three of those books. But the reality of it is if you really want to get through some things, open your Bible. Let God speak to you as he spoke to them in the times that they were writing. And when we do that, then God begins to show us. Now watch what happened. Paul says, and we did this in 2 Timothy uh, uh, chapter 3 and 16, he says, all scripture, I need to show this to you, is given by inspiration of God. That means that, yes, some people say, I don't do Old Testament. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And here it is. Why is that important? Because it's profitable for doctrine. The word doctrine means it, it shows us how we should interpret God's word. Amen. And so not only do we understand the doctrine, but it's for reproof. It is for with corrections in our lives. It is for instruction, not in your own righteousness, but in the righteousness of God. And here it is, that the man of God may be complete. Is it possible that we got a lot of folk that been in church all their life? And, and, and yeah, they know how to shout on key. But they have no completeness in their life because they never picked the Bible up. We got a lot of people. They 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 couldn't they couldn't tell you what's in the Bible, but yet we occupy seats on Sunday morning. How do we become complete? Well, we become complete by opening the scriptures. We become complete by studying and show ourselves. We become complete by getting in Bible study in Sunday school. And when we do that.
that. Here it is. Then we can be thoroughly equipped, not only for good work, but for whatever adversity comes our way. I've had many occasions in my life where uh, I didn't know how I was going to make it, but I started figuring out uh, if, if I could just get God's word, work God's word can give me strength. Anybody feel that yet? Amen. To know that, that the word of God is there to help us. That's why the writer says, the word of God have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against heaven. Why is that important? Because the more I read, the better my life gets. How does that happen? Because I recognize this is sin and I need to stay away from it. We only get that when we start reading our Bible. So, eight things that we have to do. We have to learn how to get in God's word. But then here's the ninth thing. The ninth thing we have to reflect on the ways in which we might minister to others, here it is, in your adversity. The very word minister means how I can serve others in the midst of my adversity. So, how do we deal with that? We got to learn how to comfort. We got to learn how to help. We got to learn how to give to others. How do we do that? We turn not inward, but we turn outward. Amen? Amen. So, oftentimes, as Christians, we've been guilty of being inward focused. Here it is. It's all about me. Uh, what can I get out of? How can I get recognized on Sunday morning? Inward. But when we learn that, that sometimes God will send the wind of adversity to come in our life, he's trying to get you to get out of self. Get away from selfish mindset and learn how to say, God, not my will, but your will be done. That is what happens oftentimes when we begin to reflect and say to God, God, help me to turn from being inward and let me become an outward Christian. Why is that important? Because this involves us comforting, it involves us helping others, it involves us giving to others. I can't do that if it's all about me. Mm -hmm. And that is why it is so important. Look again, I'm going to take you, Colossians, Colossians. Uh, look, look how Paul began to share with us as we began to deal with this outward mindset. Colossians chapter 3, uh, verse 13, for those who are following us. Look at verse 13. Now, now, now here's the key for us. Uh, when, when I looked at it, Verse 13 has a very good significance to it, but, but, but in order for us to understand 13, i got to take you to verse 12. Because here is what Paul says uh, as it relates to you and I uh, beginning to get to a point where we learn how to be outward focused. Look how Paul says, as, watch again, verse 12, put on therefore as the elect of God. The very elect means I have been saved, I have been sanctified, I have confessed. I'm part of God's people. Now I'm the elect of God. And watch what happens then. If I am the elect of God, put on holiness. Put on, watch this, uh, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness, meekness, long-suffering. Here it is. I, I, I've learned to put these things that are not inward focused, but all of these things help me to be outward focused. So Paul said, put these things on. But look what happens. When I put these things on, look at verse 13, then I can forbear one another. Then I can forgive one another. If I have a quarrel against anyone, here it is, just as Christ forgave me, I can also do the same. But I can't do that if I'm inward focused. Everybody got it? I can't do it if it's all about me. I can't do it if it's all about uh, showing people hateful ways. If I can't, if I can't, if, if all I'm doing is talking and tearing people down, how can I, watch this, be outward focused? How can I bear one another's burden if I'm trying to tear you down? If, if all the time you call me is to talk about folk, <laughs> the only time you deal with me is you want to get me on your side. Paul said, no, that's inward focus. That's not outward focus. And because of that, here it is with us, we have a lot of complaints against each other. We have a lot of unforgiveness in the church. And here it is, until we learn how to become outward in our focus and learn how to walk in humbleness, Show by the mercy until we get to the point where we learn how to be meek uh, and how we be long-suffering. We will never be able to be outward and serve anybody until you get out of self. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God will send that verse to show you it's not about you. It's about him. It's about the people I'm sending you to minister to. And so here it is for us. When we begin to look at it, we realize that, that God began to show us. Look, look at number 10. 10 and final one. We've got to ask the Lord to give you courage as you stand strong in faith, give to others in need, and remain faithful to your relationship with him. Let's go a little further. What does he say to us? If we are going to truly be able to deal and to, and to respond in order 
we got to first go to God and say, God, I need girls. Why is that important? Joshua, in the midst of all, when God was getting ready to say, Joshua, I need you to lead my people, he says, here it is, be strong and of good courage. Why is that important? Because in order for you to have a strong faith, you got to have courage. Because you're going to deal with people that don't like you. You're going to deal with people who don't want to work with you. You're going to have to deal with people who are doing certain things to tear you down, whether it's at work, whether it's at home, what is your ex, where is a family member, watch this. But you got to stand strong in faith. And the more you stand strong in faith, here it is, uh, he will give to others in need and then remain faithful. Uh, one of the things that I, I found out uh, going through COVID-19 is God has shown me this idea of faithful versus unfaithful. There are some people that God has put in my, in my path, and I know they are faithful to God. I know they have a good relationship with God. But then I found out there are some people that I really thought were, were faithful, that, that some people I really thought had a good relationship with God. But then I saw something different in their walk. Mm. And I believe, I believe that God oftentimes will show us, uh, if we ask him, God, give me that courage to stand. Give me that courage when I got to go to work to put my mask on and not let me be fearful. Give me that courage, God, when I have to deal with, with situations I'm not comfortable with. Uh, there are many times I got to go to funerals, and here it is. Uh, it is the most uncomfortable thing to go outside in funerals with people all around. But here it is. I've got to ask God, God, help me to stand in faith. Mm -hmm. Help me to do what you call me to do because I know you are a God of protection. I know that you are God. When I go to Hallmark, when I go to Coleman, when I go to Fort Valley State, I know you will protect me. I know that if I stand, uh, if I remain faithful to you, that here it is, you're going to make sure that you keep me in perfect peace because my mind is staying on me. So when we think about it, God says, how do you respond when, when adversity comes that's caused by the fear? You've got to remain faithful. You've got to ask God for courage. And as we do that, God will continue to watch us and keep blessing us. So as we start to deal with it, can I tell you, adversity serves as a crash course that will compel us, here it is, to grow. Now, why is that important? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, let me take you there. 1 Corinthians, look what Paul says about uh, this faith. 1 Corinthians, look again at chapter 16. Uh, and I want to take you there to verse 13. Look what it says. It says, watch ye. Huh. Stand fast in faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. <laughs> Let's go a little bit. Watch. In other words, he said, be aware. You, you, you're warning. Stand fast in your faith. <laughs> you said, yeah, I like that. Stand fast in your faith. But watch what happens here. And, and when you stand faith, fast in your faith, he said, don't quit. But stand up like a man <laughs> and be strong. <laughs> and what a message for these times that we're dealing with. When we realize 250,000 people have died, we think about 11 million people have been affected. Hear, hear what Paul says, stand strong. Mm -hmm. Stand up like a man. Don't quit. Be faithful in the things that God called you to do. Because here it is, be courageous. Stand strong. Because God is in the process of building you. God is in the process of creating you and making you into the one of his saints on the very earth that we are found. And if you will ever get to the point where you say, God, I don't, have, I don't have the courage, I need some more courage. Because I want to be strong. I want to go to work every day and, and still be able to bless you. I want to be able to go and still be a witness. I want to still be able to go out and minister. I want to still be able to go out and show the world the God that I belong to. And the only way we can do that is we learn to stand strong in faith. Anybody got it? But let's close this because I, I believe that, that in, in the midst of that, ultimately, your response to adversity is to say to your Heavenly Father, have your way in my life. Why is that important? Because adversity can sometimes bring you to your knees. And while on your knees, you got to learn to acknowledge Jesus as Lord of my life. Humble yourself before God and let him do his good work in you. And when we let him do his good work in us, then that is when God begins to show us who he really is. Amen? Amen. I want to just open up because I know that as we get ready, uh, next week we won't be uh, in Bible study. Uh, but, but let me just share with you a little bit uh, of where we're going next week because uh, one of the things uh, that God places in this particular uh, verse, I want to deal with the text, giving thanks in the middle of it. 
Why is that important? As we move into the season of Thanksgiving, uh, I want to share with you that giving faith actually helps you to get through your adversities. Why is that important? Because when you think about it, watch the introduction here. Uh, the secret weapon that can help us through our adversity, here it is, is thanksgiving. It is gratitude that is not only powerful, but grants us both unlimited power and access to God. Here is the key for us. The critical piece of our arsenal as we seek to advance through adversity in service to God is your ability to give thanks. Now, why is that important? Because the question becomes, why give thanks? And as you start to get ready next week for your Thanksgiving, and, uh, it's going to be a little different because, you know, we may not have the big uh, family gathering. We may not have all this. But can I tell you, you can still give thanks. We, we can still bless God for all that he's done for family. Uh, some of us have lost some, some family members. Some of us have had experience some sickness. Some of us have went through a lot in 2020. Amen. 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 But, but can I tell you, we can still give thanks for everything he's done. Why is that important? I want to leave you with this scripture. First Thessalonians, uh, because I think as, as, as we go through this season, as God began uh, to help us get through it, First Thessalonians uh, chapter 5. Verse number 16. Now, I want to share this with them on the way out the door. Because uh, what, what the author is saying to us is even when we're going through, when we're in the middle of our adversity, we're in the middle of our storm, watch what he says to us that will help us to get through it. Look, look again at verse number 16. He says, rejoice evermore. Or in some translation, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I want you to marinate on that text as we get ready to leave. As we get in this Thanksgiving season next week, uh, I, I want you to keep the memories. I want you to keep the Zooms and the Facebooks open because even though we may not be able to do what we normally do, we can still give thanks. We can still rejoice, we can still pray, and we can still give thanks in the middle of everything that's going on around us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we bless you now for the words that you have deposited in us. God, we've learned how to respond to the adversity, especially, God, uh, when, God, the adversity is caused by our sin. And so, God, as we get ready to leave here, God, we are praying right now for this nation. God, we need you. God, we pray for Washington. We're praying, God. Uh, for all of these uh, our states, God, who are going through these extreme cases of COVID, hospital beds are full again. God, we're dealing with all types of things, God. We, we need you right now. And Lord, in the absence of leadership from above, God, we need you to come into this place, God. We need you to be in the hospital, nursing home. We need you to be with us, God. Give us, God, all we need to get through the things that we're going through. And so, God, even right now, Lord, as we are preparing Thanksgiving season. Give us a spirit of goodwill. Lord, help us to be outward in our focus, God. To be able to reach out to others, especially those who are standing in need. Those, God, who are missing family. Those, God, who don't have the food on their table. But God, right now, Lord, as we give you thanks, God, develop in us a servant heart. That, God, that we may be full in the things that we do. That, God, that we may exemplify in our service that we give. God, if we can help anybody along the way. God, help our labor to not be in vain in you. God, dismiss us from this place, never from your sight. But it is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you guys.